Hey everybody, it's Brian, and today I'm gonna to show you a really important skill, which is rebuilding the top end on your two-stroke, so let's get going. Hey everybody, it's Brian. I'm back in the shop again today. Today we're going to go over doing a top end. It's not a very difficult job, but it does take a little bit of patience and you do have to take off a lot of things on your motor like your pipe and a lot of stuff. So there is some process involved, but I'm going to take you through it step by step. And if you're ready to get going, I'm ready to get going. So let's start. And the first step is going to be draining the radiator fluid. So let's get going. Start by loosening the water drain plug, the bottom of the water pump. I like to break the bolt loose because not as much water spills out this way, and then break the radiator cap loose. And I just broke the radiator cap loose, a little bit more came out. Once you get the lion's share of that water out, you can return the drain plug. Next, remove the seat on a CR125. These are 10 millimeters. Although not specifically called out in the service manual, I think it's easier to just go ahead and take the radiator shrouds off. Next, you can remove the fuel tank, so it's not difficult. Remove that breather, eight millimeter bolt. At the top of this tank, strap the back end and the fuel line on the left. Then the tank comes out pretty easy. This isn't specifically called out in the service manual, but I think it's easier just to remove these hose clamps and take these completely off the radiators and at the cylinder head. Next, remove the spark plug cap. This is another procedure not called out specifically in the manual, but I just think it's easier to remove this hose clamp at the bottom of the radiator and just take the whole junction piece out. It's, then remove this eight millimeter radiator mount. Using some Twex 12 millimeter box ends, you can uh, remove these hanger plates. Next, remove this spark plug, 15 16 wrench. So next is the exhaust, and you have to take off this eight millimeter bolt. Then remove this 12 millimeter screw, and then remove the springs from the expansion chamber. And hopefully remove the exhaust without too much drama. Just break loose these cylinder head bolts. I'm not taking them all the way out because I'm servicing the cylinder itself, but this just makes it a little bit easier later to take the cylinder off when I have the cylinder mounted on the bench. This next one's a little difficult to show, but you're gonna take off this exhaust flange right here, which is an eight millimeter. There's three bolts here, and usually they're not easy to get off. Next, you can just bend back this little tab to let the electrical put the spark plug out, cycle the piston, until it's at top dead center. Next, I remove the Honda power port valve cover. Next, you remove this B clip, it's called. Remove that collar and remove the HPP arm. Valve cover on the left. Now we're ready to remove all these nuts from the cylinder. There's four, and those are going to be done in a crisscross pattern. Theoretically, you should be able to remove the cylinder now. Not much carbon at all, surprisingly. All right, you can see we got some rotten studs here. I wasn't expecting that, frankly. Don't lose track of these dowel pins. There's one here, one over here. Next, we're gonna take out the RC valve flaps. And to do that, the easiest way is to take off this 10 millimeter nut. And then next, you'll take off this keeper.
Once you got that nut and the keeper off, you can push this flat valve shaft out as an assembly. The RC valves will, will come out after that. Getting these RC valves out is almost impossible to show on camera, kind of twist around and often fall through the exhaust themselves. So this is the orientation like that. See, they've got a lot of carbon buildup on them. Once that's out, it's easy to remove this bushing off the left side basically time to clean this thing. So we're going to clean the cylinder up real nice and then I'm going to end up replacing these two studs that have gotten kind of rotten. So oven cleaner is amazingly good at getting out these hard carbon deposits not only on the inside of the exhaust ports but also on your flapper valves. They do a great job getting off all of the little uh, hardened carbon deposits off of these things and granted it's hard to get these things perfect without sending them to a vapor blaster or something. Hey, I just want to jump in here and mention something, and that is if you want to really do your top end right, you need to take the time to do the measurements on the top end. Check the bore, check the cylinder, check those for warpage. Go ahead and check out your piston condition and so on. And I've got a video for that. The link is up here. So if you want to go check that out, please do. I'll also put that in the description. So if you want to check that out later, but if you really want to do this job right, you need to take the time to measure all the specifications on the cylinder and the cylinder head just to make sure that nothing's out of shape. So if you've already done it, great. If you haven't, I would recommend checking that out before you completely reassemble the top end. But with that, I'm ready to move on if you are. So we're on to cylinder stud replacement. If you've seen some of my other videos, uh, you probably have seen the technique for removing a stud. This is the way that I like to do it. 12 millimeter wrench, put the nut down with the flange facing up. Another 12 millimeter with the flange abutting the other flange. So these are uh, opposing each other. Tighten the two together. And hopefully you can back out the uh, stud without too much trauma. Okay, clean those holes out and put in our new studs. All right, same technique in reverse. The thread should be clean as well as the boss into which the bolt threads needs to be clean as well. Before you put any kind of locking agent, it will not adhere if there's oil or anything inside that bore or on the thread. And the torque specification on these is only nine foot pounds, so it's not a lot of torque. This may seem a little obvious, but the way that you want to break these nuts apart is by loosening the bottom nut, not loosening the top one, because you want to continue to put torque into the bolt. If you go this way, you'll be separating the two nuts with putting torque into the bolt. That way you don't lose your torque specification. So now it's time to install the RC valve shaft and the flapper valves. And just so you understand the orientation of these, this is how the assembly works. On a CR125 on this one, which is a 2007, these uh, reliefs here face upwards and the flapper valves are in this orientation basically. So it's almost impossible to show you how the flapper valves go back into the cylinder, but you just have to work them in through the exhaust port and you just work them up into those areas where they, uh, they fit. Now you're ready to install the flapper valve shaft and you have to put a little grease on that. Molybdenum disulfide grease pass through the flapper valves. Those bosses, see that? This black arm here engages that pin. That is when the valves are in their low RPM configuration. And then this is fully open. So closed, open. And finally, this sleeve goes in on the other side with that notch facing up. Press that into place. Slides in real nice. Next is our little keeper and our six millimeter bolt. Tighten down our nut and we have a flapper valve. 
When you're using an OEM piston, it'll have the letter A here stamped on the top. I'm not sure what that FS stands for, but there's a letter A, and that is an A piston for an A cylinder. Right there is the letter N. That's called a mark, and it should face upwards on the piston. So when you install a piston ring, you need to put a little bit of oil, two-stroke oil, around the groove, which I did not do. This is a used piston ring, and uh, I didn't really see the reason to uh, get my fingers greasy, frankly. But it's pretty simple. So spread the ends. Make sure you line up the pin. Spread the end gap. And drop the ring in. So very simple. All right, next we're gonna put in the circlips at the end of the wrist pin. I prefer to use this hemostat to put this thing in, and I'll show you how I do it. So I'm doing this off of the bike to try to show you, to me, like one of the best ways to do it. And once it's in there, you can take the wrist pin and push it, if you have the old one, you can take it and push it into the groove, and that is done. So uh, that is, to me, the easiest way to do it. On a factory piston, the word in is stamped on the intake side of the piston. So this is the intake right here. This is where the reed cage goes. And this is the intake, basically, side of the piston. I like to use assembly lube uh, when I'm putting on these bearings and so on. A lot of people like to use two-stroke oil. There's nothing wrong with either one. They're both, they're both gonna burn off. But one thing I like about about assembly lube is that it's a little gummier and it stays on a little bit better I think than two-stroke oil but either one is fine so install the bearing into the little end of the rod next is the wrist pin which also needs some lube line up the wrist pin with the ID of the piston bore and pass that through the little end rod bearing and drive it home so now I have to install the circlip on this side all right, so the next step is to install the cylinder onto the piston. So let's go through that. So remove the rag, make sure that any dust or anything you've gotten on there comes up. You're not dumping it into the case. I personally like to oil these gaskets just a little bit. That makes it a little bit easier to disassemble these just in case you have to take the cylinder off at some other times. Next, dowel pins. If you've ever watched any of my other videos, you know that I like to use anti-seize on these dowel pins. Just in case you have to take the cylinder off some other time, it keeps them from becoming fused to either the crankcase or the cylinder head. All right, it's money time. Time to put in the cylinder. We're gonna lube up the piston with some assembly lube, lube the inside of the cylinder with some assembly lube, and then we slide the cylinder on and you gotta be careful, you don't wanna twist the cylinder when you're sticking it on because it can snag a ring. So try to make the installation completely straight down. Press the ring. Down she goes, as smooth as you like. These head gaskets have what is basically like an embossed effect. So this basically is proud of this surface here, so and including this little ceiling ring right there. So this basically is the up portion to mirror the factory up portion. So just keep that in mind. The, the embossed portion faces upwards and the recessed portion faces downwards. And this tab that you see here that protrudes, that faces towards the rear of the engine. So this goes on like this. So the dowel pins that go on the cylinder head don't tend to get as corroded as the ones on the cylinder, but I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of anti-seize on there anyway. Okay, now I'm ready to put on the cylinder head itself. Pretty as you like. Install the cylinder head bolts. And then the cylinder bolts. After you got the nuts installed, you can torque down the cylinder nuts in a crisscross pattern in steps, finally ending at 27 Newton meters or 20 foot pounds. So this one, that one, this one, that one. One thing I'd like to note is the difficulty of accessing this nut for torquing 
And what I have done is I basically torque this one down to 25 Newton meters. Then I take my wrench and I see how much force it takes to break that, that nut a little bit, to give a little bit of movement. And I consider that to be the extra two pounds to make it 27 Newton meters. And I just get a feel for that amount of tension and I apply the same to this nut here. So again, if you've been in the garage a long time, you probably have a feel for how tight something is and how much resistance it's giving you. And it's pretty close to accurate. I mean, even some calibration on torque wrenches is not completely accurate, but if the, if the same amount of force is being applied to every nut, you're probably in good shape as long as there's enough torque on there. 25 Newton meters. And just when it starts to break and tighten a little more, I can feel that. Out there. And let's check this because I think that it's 27. Let's see. 27. It worked perfectly. So we're 27 Newton meters on this now to torque down the cylinder head. Tighten the cylinder nuts down to 27 Newton meters or 20 foot pounds. The cylinder head is done and the cylinder is done. Now we're off to the other side to button up the uh, RC valve. I strongly recommend that you put something in this area to make sure that nothing falls inside the case right there. Just something to make sure that the uh, clip doesn't fall in while you're installing the pinion arm. So this part goes on this face right there like that. Voila. All right, so with the B clip in, it's time to put the cover plate on. That looks so nice. Next, we install the RC valve cover. Don't forget to install this tab that goes through the bolt to hold this uh, wire in place. All right, so I've got both RC valve covers in place. And from this point forward, I'm gonna move kind of briskly because from here on out, basically it's the ancillary parts that we're going to install. Most of the mechanical things have been done. So I'm gonna move kind of fast from this point forward. So let's get started now with the radiator crossover hose. Radiator mount, reinstall the radiator crossover. Install the main radiator hose onto the head. Spark plug, 13 16 wrench, a spark plug boot, hanger plates, and finish by tightening them down with 12 millimeter box ends. Next is the exhaust flange that has three bolts. Next comes the pipe. Reinstall these finicky exhaust springs. Exhaust flange bolt and another bolt here in the pipe. Next is the pipe to muffler junction, and I always put some RTV in here. There's always a lot of oil leakage coming out of this junction, so it keeps the oil from getting all over my swing arm. Install the gas tank with a six millimeter socket. Install the rear anchor strap. And next, reinstall the fuel line and the compression clip. Install the radiator shrouds. Next is the seat installation that requires a 10 millimeter socket. And finally, refill the radiator fluid. Hey guys, I hope that you learned something today in this video. I had a lot of fun making it. This one wasn't quite as time consuming as the one I did recently, which took me forever. And uh, I really appreciate everyone that's taken the time to watch and comment on my videos. I really appreciate it. As I mentioned earlier, I will have a link to the measuring video that you can use to check the top end specifications on your engine. And that'll be in the description. And I'm putting time points in this one as well so that you don't have to go through every single step if you don't need to. So, hey, thanks again so much for watching. I really appreciate everyone that takes the time to watch these videos. It means so much to me. So thank you so much. I enjoy putting them out there and I really appreciate the growth and the positive response that I've been getting. So you keep watching and I'll keep making videos. So thanks again and have fun in your garage.